Hi, my name is Kenny Nguyen. Uh, today we're going to be talking about load testing gRPC services in Node.js. Uh, so who am I uh, before we get started? Uh, so before we journey into this uh, presentation, I just want to establish what drove us, uh, meaning the team to create gRPC. It's a tool conceived through uh, pragmatic exploration and analysis of the gRPC protocol. Uh, we used it as our sandbox, right, uh, for studying and probing the nuances of gRPC. So while we gained knowledge through this uh, journey, the overarching objective was to explore and understand the challenges that other devs may face surrounding gRPC and Node. Uh, so this is the team that created it. Miri's on the left, me, uh, Patrick, Johnny. Miri's actually right there, hiding in the back. And then this is the new gRPC mascot. That's my dog, Charlotte. So today's agenda is uh, why load test your uh, servers, and then I'll introduce gRPC, the load testing tool that uh, we created. Then I'll talk about some insights into development, uh, followed by a quick demo. After the demo, I'll talk about some performance metrics. And then at the end, we'll do a Q&A. So why load testing? Um, so load testing helps devs identify issues such as system lag, slow page load times or crashes when different levels of traffic are accessing the app during production rather than post-launch. Uh, it can help you identify bottlenecks in your system, uh, knowing how your, uh, your system performs under various levels of load can help you uh, identify um, scalar services effectively. Also, have you had any um, made any promises in your service level agreements, these load tests can help you uh, meet, meet those guarantees as well. So what is gRPC-seq? Um, like I said, it's a load testing tool. Uh, there are various aspects of, of, perform of performance testing, such as stress testing, uh, network throttling, and so on. This tool just focuses on um, load testing. And some key metrics we'll be looking at are uh, CPU uh, usage and latency. Uh, so gRPC does more than just like hammer your server with requests. Uh, it also gives you like a window into what's happening to your system with some visuals and like charts and to make things a little bit more digestible. So the first insight, uh, the first challenge we ran into was how do we dynamically generate or, or obtain this client stub? There's a bunch of options uh, to do that. Uh, just to name a few is like co-generation, reflection, and or like giving your profile path. So for code generation, we just asked that the user generate client server code from the profiles and share that with us. And then that could be like really, um, that you could get like, the pros of that is like, you could get compiled time checks, which can catch errors early. Um, the cons, it, it just adds an extra step. Um, it could lead to more like versioning challenges. The second is reflection. Um, your, the server would have to have the reflection um, on it, um, which is not always the case. And then the last uh, method, which is what we went with, is the profile path. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just put your file path in a config file for us, and then we just use that to create the client stub. So why is this uh, nice? It's super simple. Um, it's easier to manage different versions of your profiles. Um, you can have like dynamic updates, so switching profiles without recompiling the tool. So this is like an example of a simple config. Um, the first one, be, uh, there's a couple of things here. The first one being duration, so just like the time uh, defined of, of the load test. And then the path to your profile, your service name, your package name, method name. This is just pulled straight from the official GitHub repo for uh, gRPC, so this might look familiar. And then these, this is like the options, uh, the flags that are in the CLI tool. If you don't define it in the YAML file, um, but if you do define a YAML file, it's a little bit, little bit less verbose when you do the CLI tool. So the second insight we had was observability, um, like the like the previous presentation just said, um, there's like three pillars that observability stands on, right? 
the first one being logs. Uh, these are just like the detailed descriptions of what the system is doing in an environment. Uh, so in gRPC, this would be things like client server communication, request response payloads, any errors or exceptions. Metrics are going to be the quantitative data that you give. Uh, and then you can aggregate that to get a sense of how your system is performing. Traces, this lets you track your request journey through various uh, services and systems. And then to solve this uh, observability, we just use gRPC interceptors. And then, so obviously there's a lot of observability and monitoring tools, like why would we not just use Prometheus or like Grafana and all these other tools? Um, it's not because they're not great, it's because, well, they are, but it's kind of like an over overkill for something that could be like really simple or have a really simple process, right? Um, if you just want to do a, like a simple load test, you don't really need to like, hold on to meet this and then like create a Grafana dashboard just for that. Um, and then the third and final insight that we had was um, concurrency. Uh, given that uh, node is has a single threaded event loop, uh, we were just trying to figure out how to load test our server and how to simulate multiple concurrent requests. Um, recent, well, it's not brand new, but recently uh, node has released worker threads uh, that you can access. So we use that. So we just spun up a bunch of clusters and each cluster would spin up worker threads and we would use that to uh, simulate a, a load test to our server. And then so what we did was for data collection was uh, each worker thread would use the inter-thread uh, inter communication and pass messages uh, between each other and then back to the main thread uh, to like, aggregate all that data. Um, so these would be things like, like CPU usage, like I said, uh, latency and throughput. Um, another interesting uh, metric that we used was event loop utilization. Um, Trevor Norris actually talks about this and can explain it way better than me. But to summarize his, um, his article, he said, CPU is no longer enough of a measurement uh, to scale applications. There are other factors such as garbage collection, crypto, and other tasks uh, placed in LibUV's thread pool and that can increase CPU usage in a way that is not indicative of the app's overall health. So the event loop is just like basically a timer for um, when the event loop is idle or when it's active and just like a ratio of that. And the nice thing about that is you can use that uh, per thread um, because it is a thread safe method. So you don't have to worry about any memory leaks with that and whatnot. So, and because each worker has his own uh, V8 instance and event loop, uh, so you can track each instance's um, event loop utilization like ratio, right? All right, time for a demo. Mm All right, so I'm already in my uh, like file path, right? So I'm just gonna start my server. Super simple command. npm run gRPC server. It's gonna start on um, 50,051. And then I have a, a script ready to run my load test. So it's gonna ask, this is a gRPC load balance tester. Um, it's gonna ask you how many clusters you want based on the amount of cores in your computer. Mine has 10. So I'll just put 10. Um, how many worker threads per cluster? Recommended one, because you don't want to overload uh, the core or else it's not really optimal. And then this part you can put how many you want. Like if I put like, like 500. So it would just like load test uh, that server. So there's like 5,000 calls to that server. like. And then it'll create an HTML file for you. So I don't want to like show all my, oh, wow. It creates it right here. I call it dash HTML. You can call it whatever you want.
and then so this is kind of hard to read but it's pretty basic stuff like your cpu usage obviously it's going to be really high we just use like all the cores in my computer to load test but what we're looking for is the 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 screen part right here especially like the it's the y-axis on the right over here is uh the percentage that the the event loop is uh utilized like over that time so naturally like if you have like a you want to test like your, your service and your cpu usage is like high but your event loop utilization uh ratio is not necessarily that high that would that doesn't mean that you need to scale up uh, necessarily because um your event loop is probably blocked or not being um, optimized. Um, you can't see it right here because I don't have uh, this. This uh, data doesn't show that, but it's kind of what that whole idea is. Um, let me see. Let's go back to the next, next slide. Well, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it. Uh, Oh, so what's next? Um, well, we're that was only unary testing, we're, and we're trying to make uh, the other streamings as for testing as well. Um, always open for feedback and contributions, of course. And does anyone have any questions? The uh, metrics that you showed are those showing the utilization um, on the client that's performing the test, or on the server that's receiving the load? Yeah, that's a good question. So I was actually like trying to figure that part out because it is all ran on my computer. So I'm not completely sure. Uh, Cause each, I believe it's on the server, the way I set it up, but I have to look into that more. Cause I have event loop metrics being recorded on both sides actually. Um, yeah. They were a separate machine. What would be? You'd be a server side, yeah. I had a question. Um, could you use this for really big stress testing? Like, have you thought of that? Like, utilize ten machines that would all connect, or that's outside of your your scope? Um, I've thought about it, but I haven't tried it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is for uh, NPM, right? Yeah. So, any plant or any can you uh, maybe add tools for similar tools for Golang? Oh, sorry. What was that? Any similar tool or any? Do you plan to support Golang in future? Or, or go. Go. Oh, uh, I mean, I. Not, it should be like language agnostic, right? It should be able to like uh, they'll test other servers and other languages. I haven't tried that yet, to be honest. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna uh, on the roadmap. 